All right, guys, you should be done with one through six by now. I told you I'd go through on one and two with you just to make sure, and then we'll move on to graphing piecewise functions back on that first page. All right, so I said I'd check number one. The X was eight greater than, definitely eight is greater than one. It's not less than negative six. It's not between negative six and one. Eight is definitely greater than one. Notice how we're going to those domain pieces first and then choosing the rule for negative four X plus seven. And that's what we put the eight into. Four times eight is 32. It's a negative, add the seven. You should have gotten negative 25. Check number two. My X is one. Is one less than negative six? No. One is between negative six and or equal to one. This is the rule we're going to use it in because one is equal to one. All right. So we're plugging in the two X minus X squared. Put a one in for both those X's. Exponents first. Square it. You get a one. Put the negative sign in front. Multiplication second, two times one is two, two minus one is one. We do our addition, subtraction last. All right, so there's that, but now we need to go back to our notes where we were a couple of pages back, and we had our discussion about what a piecewise function is. Sorry, you got my ruler there. And we're gonna now move on with how to graph piecewise functions and then identify the domain and range. I know you got this little graph here. I'm going to use a bigger one because it's a little easier for you to see. I have my ruler here or my straight edge. So let's get to graphing. Graphing is based on that same idea that I need to know where my X is for one rule stop and the X is for the second rule takes over. It looks right here at negative three. I'm gonna drop a vertical line at X equals negative three, one, two, three, to say, hey, this graph is going to split up at that, what they call it is a point of redefinition. Because we redefine one function and stop using it and start using the other one. So let's think about to the left of that function. To the left of, or sorry, to the left of that negative three. That's over in this area. We are supposed to use this rule for x's that are less than or equal to negative three. That rule is a very simple equation of y equals x. I don't see a plus b on it, so I'll assume that we're going to go with plus zero. y equals x plus zero. The line should go up. We should begin at zero. It goes up one, over one, up one, over one, up one, over one, etc. But I'm not going to keep going this far on this direction because it's the wrong direction. I want to keep going this way so I can get to this region right here. Remember where x equals negative three? That's where that line is. I want to be able to graph this on this part of the coordinate system over here, not on that one. But let's see if my ruler can help me make a straight edge. Whoop. Working on it here again. There we go. All right. So I'm going to put my straight edge down on what I believe to be one of those corners. Oh, no. There it is. Now it's rotating. See if I can get my straight edge to match the angle of that line. Drop down there. And there's a couple of different ways you could view this. You could be like, oh, I'm only going to write on this part right here until I get to negative three. Or you're going to be like, oh, I'm just going to connect all my ordered pairs, which that means it's a little off the right angle there hard to do with this straight edge because it's digital okay and I'm gonna write only that one and then I'm gonna erase it I probably should have been up about there okay not too big a deal because that end's gonna get erased anyhow 
I'm going to move my straight edge off there, and I'm going to get my eraser out, and I'm going to be erasing everything to the right of where x equals negative 3. Okay? My line is going to continue down and to the left, down 1 over 1. And right here, because it has the equal to, I'm going to put a closed circle on that dot right there. Down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. Over one. Looks like that line's all just a little bit high. Oops. It should all be right in here. Okay. Oh, great. Sorry about the hectic digital graphing. Now you know why I like that document camera. That's the one that we should have right there. I started at zero, down one, over one, down one, over one, down one, over one. My line is going in a positive slope. I'll slide it down and put my arrows. Yeesh. My arrows on the end of my line. My closed dot at x equals negative three, comma, one, two, three, negative three. And now I'll work on the second piece of the line. The second piece of the line is not dealing with y equals x. The second piece of the line is dealing with all the x's that are greater than negative 3, which means we're talking about this half of the coordinate system from negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So now I'm going to use this y equals mx plus b, negative 2x plus 1, and I'll be graphing it on this side over here of the line, well, x equals negative 3. So I begin at 1. The line is supposed to slope down because of the negative sign in front of the 2. I'll go down 2 and over 1, down 2 and over 1, down 2 and over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. And these are all the ordered pairs that I'll use to line up my rule. I'll get that as close as I can to them. Make sure that down to over one looks like we've come up just a little bit on that. Make sure my ruler extends. From the point where I want to write, and these are the ordered pairs that I'm trying to make a straight edge for. I'm not going to go all the way up there. I'm going to erase everything beyond that x equals negative three line. Check right here. Teacher's coming up. You can tell when I'm recording that. Check right here. There's no equal to, so over here there won't be a closed dot. There'll be an open circle. Right in there where the line y equals negative 3. This is basically what my graph should look like. Two pieces. Both those pieces are separate, and they break up at this vertical line right here where x equals negative 1, or sorry, negative 3. I really should get rid of that dotted line because it's not really part of the graph. It's just there to help me visualize where it breaks up. That's what the graph should look like, okay? So when we look at this thing, we should think about the domain. Well, the domain goes all the way to the left, and it goes all the way to the right. There is maybe a break up here, but no. Nope. So every real number is there. And then when we look at the range, going from that perspective of the horizontal, or the horizontal line, like, yeah, it's all the way at negative infinity, but we leave the graph right there, don't we? What is that value? Let's go. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 
They say seven. I'm a little dubious of that. Up two over one, up two over one, up two over one. They're right. My line is a little sketch in how it was laid out. It should be up here. You'll have to pull, take a little bit of slack there off from my digital straight edges. That is how we graph it. You just need to be a little more careful with your rise run than I was able to be there. Up two over one, up two over one. Of two over one. That's really where that line should be. Okay. Let's do number four. All right, number four, and then we'll turn you loose on the rest of your homework this time. Number four is made of two different pieces right here. We can see. When we look, we got the first line up here at negative three x minus seven only if x is less than negative one and then we got the horizontal line y equals negative five only if x is greater than or equal to negative one okay so if we were to put that kind of dotted line in it would be breaking up our graph right here at x equals negative one okay got the left of it and we got to the right of it to the right of it is the easiest one right here because it's saying if x is greater than or equal to negative 1, do a horizontal line, y equals negative 5. I can do a horizontal line, y equals negative 5. I'll use it for this one. It's the easy one. I'm starting with it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. My horizontal line is going to be across here. If that's where my horizontal line is positioned, which side of it should show up and which side of it should be erased? So I just have the whole thing go all the way across? I don't think so. Only where the x's are greater than negative 1. That means these x's have to erase their horizontal line at negative 5 and only leave the horizontal line that goes off to the right where the x's are greater than or equal to negative one that's the simple one by the way should it be an open or closed dot say closed dot thank you i'll have to move my closed dot right there got to have my arrow on my horizontal line extending it y equals negative five over here we're talking about a different line that slopes down Starts at negative 7. Let's get that one going. All right. Just checking to make sure I was recording. I may or may not have done this before when the recorder was off and had to redo it. All right. Hey. Thank you, Angel. We'll talk about that later. Um, This one starts and begins at negative 7. 6, 7, right there is where it begins. It goes down 3 over 1. Down 3 over 1. Let's go up 1, 2, 3, and back 1. Up 1, 2, 3, and back 1. Up 1, 2, 3, back 1. Up 1, 2, 3, back 1. Up 1, 2, yeah. All the way across. Okay. I'm going to take my straight edge. I'm going to tilt it a little bit. See if I can get a good parallelness to my dots, which I don't really have, but that's all right. We'll keep tilting it until we feel like we're there. And then you got to remember, you can write it down here. You can put that line all the way, but you don't want to. You want to stay up here on this side. Okay. okay, because my domain breaks up at x equals negative 1. I only want to see the blue line going. Whoops. On that side of this line. By the way, when I look, does it have the equal to right there? 
Oh, sorry. On the this is the negative three x minus seven. Does that have the equal to? No. So what kind of symbol should be at the end of that line? An open circle. Move the arrow at the other. So again, I got two pieces. One's a downward sloping line that starts at negative seven, even though you don't see it down there. On this left side of the graph. And on the right side of the graph, I have the horizontal line, y equals negative 5. While I'm getting things out of there, I'm going to get this dotted line out of there because it's not really part of the graph. And this is how that piecewise function graphs. Two pieces. Wow, I think I just did something crazy there. Two pieces, one's a downward sloping line, one's a horizontal line. Downward sloping line is where the x's are less than negative 1. The horizontal line are where the x's are greater than negative 1. And that's why our graph looks the way it looks. You should now pretty much be ready to move forward and tackle the next part of that same worksheet for homework. Okay, homework one. On the back side and further down, we should see some piecewise functions that need to be graphed. The back side, yup, they do. And as you graph them, some of them even have three pieces. See those? Okay, so that shouldn't, shouldn't change the way we approach it. We just know that, hey, the horizontal line at 6, the downward sloping line in the middle, and the horizontal line at negative 1. That's not hard to figure out. You just need to get a graph. Okay? So, homework 1, finish it. All the way. Whatever you didn't get done on the front side and whatever you need to do on the back, and then we'll talk again tomorrow as we do the next section that will be associated with homework two. Okay? I appreciate you guys working hard, not losing any time while I'm out. I take time to record. You take time to do your work. We'll all move forward. I miss you guys. I look forward to seeing you when I get back.